Hey, viewers and listeners, this is George and WGVU Public Media Friends. Thanks for joining us again for the third installment of the WGVU NPR pop-up series. We're doing these things virtually because of the pandemic and super excited to bring you great music and also get up close and personal and intimate uh, with local artists here in Grand Rapids and regionally here in the Michigan area. So if you're excited about live music and you love musical content, go to WGVU.org and click the red donate button in the top right hand corner. And that'd be a great way for you to continue to support live music and the arts here uh, in Michigan. Along with that, if you find that you really like this video, go to our YouTube page, uh, WGVU Digital Studios, and click the subscribe button so that you do not miss all the exciting content that we have planned for you all.
listeners, viewers, friends of WGVU NPR 885953. This is George, and I am excited to be with you all today and to have a special guest with us. Uh, certainly, some of you had the opportunity to witness her prowess and talent um, at the listening room back, I think, in February uh, for our pop up concert series there. But we wanted to circle back around and to catch up again with our friend Myra Mimo. Everybody give it up for Myra. Myra, how's it going? Great. Thank you so much. Thanks for this opportunity. I'm go I'm doing well. I'm doing well. You look well. <laughs> I see we're we're adorning the chain again. I think you had that oh, on that. Yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. <laughs> this one comes with me everywhere. <laughs> Yes. So well, tell, tell, tell me about the piece. Like, does it have like special significance or, or what exactly? But like you, you, you see, it seems to be like your thing when you perform and I love it because it's so dope. But is there a story behind it? <laughs> there is a story behind it, actually. Okay. Um, I wore it during my first uh, music video and okay. um, it's a piece that I, I don't know, wherever I wear it to, I get compliments and because it, it's different. It just, it's unique. Um, it is? Yeah, you don't see this very often, so uh, yeah, I love it. <laughs> and you actually have a song entitled "Unique," correct? Yes, I do. Is that the video you were in? Sorry, no, that's not it. Um, okay. It was uh, uh, "Killing Me." Okay. Yes, okay. that was my very first single, very first video. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Well, good, Myra. So let's start from the beginning. Tell the viewers and the listeners about who you are, where you're from, your origins, um, and a little bit about how you got into music. How did that, how did this all happen? Wow. <laughs> yeah, so um, I am Myra Maimo, um, originally from Cameroon. I grew up in a large home with um, uh, five siblings and four cousins and so many aunties and uncles. And uh, it was just a lot of fun. Uh, we were always outside playing. So I remember very amazing childhood memories. And uh, I always loved music. So I would always spend my time um, separating myself from the group after a while. And I would sing my songs, songs that I just created. And of course, my brothers couldn't stand it because they'd be like, oh, that's not even a real song, you know? <laughs> so it used to be like crazy at home. Right. Um, yeah, and uh, slowly but surely, when we went to kindergarten and all of that, they would uh, pick me, my teachers would normally pick me to sing or recite a rhyme or a poem or something like that. So that's where it all started. And gradually into primary school, I would do the same thing. Secondary school, I really started singing and writing songs and joined uh, several choirs. And uh, by the time I was 13, I was in girl bands and um, 15, I started doing backup uh, singing at studios or mm -hmm. in studios in, all over Cameroon and that's when I discovered I could earn some money while <laughs> you're going to pay me for what I'm doing yes. <laughs> it wasn't just a passion anymore I could really earn money and save yeah. and help my family and uh, music is just something it's my escape it's mm -hmm. uh, what I turn to when I'm really sad when I'm happy it's just something that comes naturally to me Mm -hmm. And um, all of this, so far, uh, I've mostly self-taught because of the education system we have back home here. People actually take music classes and they learn sure. how to play instruments and all of that. Back home, we don't have that. So if you love music, you need to figure out stuff for yourself. Mm -hmm. And um, it's been fun doing that. Uh, I enjoy it. And um, what else? I am a mom. I have uh, three uh, adoring <laughs> and active <laughs> yes yes very involved and they say how do they, they say they are uh, they are very let me just say very active they keep me on my toes yes, they um, do. but they are so amazing I'm a wife I am an entrepreneur as well I love people I love music I love culture I love food and so in everything that I do, I try to share that. But also, it's very important to me in the music that I make that I am able to give value um, mm -hmm. to whoever is listening to my song. So they leave uh, motivated, uplifted, um, inspired to be better. So I tend to tell a lot of stories uh, along with my songs, mm -hmm. but also the lyrics themselves, um, sure. they 
I geared towards enriching. Mm -hmm. That means a lot to me. Yeah, I, I can, I can, I can bear witness to that. Um, and and I think that's really a, a good kind of segue in the conversation too. But because we've done these concerts quite a few times, and I think you were back in February, and so we've been doing these things virtually, and it's been with um, a lot of new artists that we hope to maybe have for the next season should things reopen up. Yes. Um, but specifically um, after your show the response was incredible in terms oh. of how much people just loved that um, you were willing to very much like share your heart and share who you were, not only through your music, but also in the storytelling between the songs. Mm -hmm. Everyone's like, it was live, it was active, it was energetic. Um, there was like great moments of both like celebration, but really moments of strong introspection and, and contemplation. And so I was like, well, if people felt that way, we need to like circle back, you know, and, and get some more conversation going because we only had the opportunity, I think, to ask three questions of you that night. And even a lot of what you're telling me thus far, and spoiler alert, Myra and I are really good friends. Um, <laughs> we've known each other for, for a little while now. But I didn't even know a lot of the things that you're telling me, you know, about your story and how you got started music in yeah. Cameroon. And so it has, it, you've had very much a journey, if you will, um, from Cameroon to the U.S. And then in that, certainly... Yeah. Um, your educational journey, because you went to school yes. in Germany, right? Yes, yes. University in Germany, and then you came to the U.S. for graduate school. Myra has an MBA. Look, <laughs> she does it all. <laughs> <laughs> and so talk about how maybe those different stages in your journey or just the idea of, if you will, transience. How does that play a role in um, your music, subject matter, um, how, do, how do you feel like those experiences really unfold in kind of the art that you present? Yeah. Kind of having lived in all those different spaces and had those different experiences. So um, to, to answer your question, I'd have to take us back to Cameroon where mm -hmm. this whole thing started. And in Cameroon, it's, uh, education is very big. It's very important. Mm -hmm. And if you find kids who don't make it to school, it's because their parents or their relatives really don't have the money to send them there. Okay. Otherwise, everybody wants to get a degree, a master's degree. And the issue there, too, is we have a lot of educated people, but uh, not enough jobs for everybody. So you have to go really higher. Um, we're talking PhDs to have a chance, um, okay. to have a fighting chance. Really and, um, yes. And so um, when I was about 14, we had like a really serious, uh, like a traumatic experience in our family where my dad, was uh, taken away and put in prison for something he didn't do. And the justice system in Cameroon is not the best, but um, so he only, got, um, he only got acquitted six and a half years after. And so that affected us. We had to drop out of school for some time. And mm -hmm. for me, school was like really, really important. Yeah. Um, and so I sort of like with my jobs that I was doing during the time, I struggled i saved some money and i went to university during the first like the first semester and i discovered i really couldn't continue because i didn't have enough and i wasn't making enough and um so then i decided that i would have to um you know just go somewhere have uh, an education that would give me a fighting chance when i uh, came back to cameroon and so the only way i could do that of course my parents didn't have any money at the time I could only travel, you know, uh, um, on something like a cultural experience. Mm. Um, and so, which is what, it was very interesting to me because I'd always wanted to travel, one. Two, I love culture. I love learning about other countries, other people, how they do stuff. And so I decided to become an au pair. And um, I was an au pair in Germany, yes, for a year and about uh, three months or so. I lived with this German family. They had three kids and uh, they helped me a lot because the kids, you know, when you, you talk with kids, especially those who are just learning, um, they, they haven't yet had the time to pick up the, the accents or the dialects around. So mm -hmm. I was pretty much uh, able to learn uh, Hochdeutsch, which helped me a lot. But then it gave me opportunities to, to study in, in, in Germany. So I started studying, did my bachelor's, um, and then my master's there. And it so happened so that my university was um, offering 
offering a dual degree program in partnership with West Virginia University. And I'm like, and I'm all for that saying, ooh, let's go. <laughs> let's go try this one out too. <laughs> and um, I found myself in the US and we, I was done pretty much in a semester and a half. And yeah, then I found myself in, in Grand Rapids because of um, my husband. And we finally got married, and yeah, so that, that's how I found myself here. But taking that, all that to, uh, um, you know, how that influenced my music, I had to spend a lot of time alone without my family, and I was pretty young. So um, I, they, I would have wished that I had people who would have guided me along the way, you know, mm -hmm. because um, when you're that young, um, inexperienced you make a lot of mistakes life mis life's mistakes and all of that and particularly um the fact that i'd been my dad and myself were really close like super close and um what happened to him totally just messed us all up and mm. so um it affected the way we relate with uh people okay. um the way we relate with uh male figures and all of that and mm. uh I really want for my songs to be able to um, help somebody not mm. make the same mistakes that I made, or I want to be able to pass everything that I've learned along. And the only way I, I, I can do that is through my music, through my lyrics. And so I'm, I'm very big on uh, the message in songs, which is why you will, you will never hear me. <laughs> it is terrible, but yeah. Uh, pop songs that say, oh, let's dance, and that's all about it. I will not listen to those because they don't, <laughs> they don't, I don't see any, they don't bring me any value. And I look at it like they don't bring any value to a lot of people. So, uh, yeah, I'm one of those from like in a tiny little niche just sitting there. It's yeah. like, oh, yes, for messages. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So, t tell me about your sound. Like, how do you or how would you classify or define your sound? I think I have an idea of like, for me, how I experience it, but, or maybe how others experience it, but for you, like, how do you define your sound? Um, I am a bag of mixed nuts. <laughs> Look at a nut. <laughs> yeah, I'm not entirely um, Afro-folk. Mm -hmm. I'm not Afro-folk, I'm somewhere in the middle. I am more Afro and soul and, um, inspirational contemporary listening okay. i am smack in the middle there good. yeah <laughs> no i think that's, that's a good space to be because it certainly um is able to like highlight and show your versatility you know and your range to really move between the different spaces and i think that's that's a beautiful spot to be in because a lot of times the industry itself would have that we be like box into a particular yes, genre. Yes, yes, yes. That you're finding a home, you know, amidst the genres and in different spaces, I think is a beautiful thing. Um, and that kind of leads me to my next question in that I think it's probably goes without saying that we have found, um, I think in the last few years, maybe from the last five to 10 years, right, that um, sonically in music and a lot of times what we experience rhythm, rhythmically in music a lot of times now, um, harkens back or you find a lot of artists using like a lot of samples and things from Afri traditional African uh, cultural music and forms and Afrobeat like has become a big thing since like, since you know Black Panther, Wakanda forever and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, you know, and, and, I, and I think it's a beautiful thing because right, there's consistently been uh, this disconnect, right? Like in story and in history and cultural expression of uh, blackness and for uh, black Americans and really wanting that connection, um, you know, to homeland, to Africa, so forth and so on. And that's been influenced obviously by the onslaught of just interaction and relationship and relations between um, Africans and and Black Americans as well, but we're finding it a lot in music, and it's and it's becoming very very popular in culture. How do you feel about that? And um, yeah, particularly yeah, what what do you think about the, the blending of that um, and those two worlds coming together? And certainly, I think there's a, a strong appreciation and a desire to be connected to it, um, but also people not want to feel as though like they're appropriating at the same time. Yes, yes, I think it's 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 been due for such a long time okay. because we are family. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. And um, no matter what, uh, you know, the narratives are out there uh, for, for Black people in general, for Africa in general, um, we would really uh, progress and mm -hmm. become uh, uh, people to reckon with when mm -hmm. we get together. And the way we do that is just, this is very dear to my heart. <laughs> yeah. And um, I think for, for Africans, I, I'm going to speak for myself. I'm not speaking for all Africans who come here. Um, because we grow in a different culture, different identity. A lot of the times, what we, 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 we see or think of um, our African-American brothers is what we see on TV. And mm. that is uh, ballers, you know, everybody making it big and, and all of that. And um, because we haven't traveled and come here, we don't know what the real situation is. So we always look up to African, um, African Americans and be like, oh, when I grow up, I want to be like you, you know, take on the world like you are. And then um, we come here with that... Uh, naivete <laughs> you know yeah, and then yeah. um, um we don't realize that this is a very complex society mm -hmm. and uh i think because we come from such different histories it takes mm -hmm. a lot to want to dig in to mm -hmm. understand to peel the layers and sure. then come to a common ground because we have on the other side this this there's, uh, you know, there's a thing, they say African-Americans um, um, don't like Africans, Africans don't like African-Americans. There's really mm -hmm. nothing, nothing like that. There are, there are um, um, layers that need to, need, need to be peeled off and discussions that need to be had. Mm -hmm. And I think those are due because especially here in America, it doesn't matter which black you are, you are black. <laughs> You are black. Nobody cares where you come from. You are black. And the earlier we recognize that we are brothers and we need to work together, the better for all of us. It takes everybody coming together and having the difficult conversations that we, we, we have not had. Yes. And all of that, be it through music, be it through food, be it through... I don't know which vessel we're going to use, but those are uh, conversations that need to be had so that healing can take place and so that we can, mm -hmm. we can uh, finally step on the pedestal that we need to be on. Sure. You know? So that's how I, I, I look at all of this. And I think, um, especially with the, the, the unrest going on now and everything, mm -hmm. um, I being an African living in America, um, I've had to learn a lot and I've mm. only been able to do that because I've been listening and learning from my African-American brothers and sisters mm -hmm. because there are a lot of things that we come here ill-prepared for, <laughs> you mm. know, and it, it could be as simple as how to deal with the police. Um, mm. And that's not simple. Like, yes, it's that simple. Or it could be as simple as, that. Like, let me give an example. In Germany, um, it wasn't like racism didn't exist there. It was there. Um, an example, I was walking on the street some, sometime, I was doing my internship and I had, a, there, there were like a bunch of um, um, adolescents and they're calling out slave, slave in, in German. And mm -hmm. for me, I just said, oh Lord. And then it, it, it didn't hurt me or anything. Mm -hmm. again, because that history isn't necessarily mine. So I didn't connect with it in a way that would hurt me. Mm, okay. So I was able to move away from that, and that affects us too. Maybe at the job site, somebody would be um, a little bit aggressive towards you, and you would not really notice it because for us, it's really not a thing. So we just brush it by. And I think that has helped us Africans progress a lot here because we were protected by our Africanness, you know. Mm. And um, here, so you have to learn. <laughs> That's only as far as it goes, though, because if you are on mm. the streets and uh, you you uh, maybe you you're faced with racism, nobody cares where you come from, you know. Mm -hmm. So we have to get on the program like really fast, and the only yeah. way we do that is by by working 
alongside our African American brothers and sisters, learning from them and having these important conversations. They have to be had. Sure. And you are definitely bringing people into that conversation and into that space with a lot of your entrepreneurial efforts. Talk to us about those, um, specifically the uh, Motherland uh, house concert experiences along with the cooking classes that you're doing um, that certainly in my mind are like blowing up all over. People um, are talking a lot about them and you are really um, staking claim and, and make it, making um, room for yourself or rather creating a table to invite other people to to have these types of conversations and doing it with food and with your music. Talk to us about that. Um, yeah, Motherland is so dear to my heart and the, the back story to that is Again, um, coming to Grand Rapids and with all my qualifications, I've been working um, in a company back in Central Africa. We were uh, um, um, helping small and medium-sized businesses. We were doing business consulting, strategy, financial uh, things, and, um, uh, operations, just getting them to a point where they could um, actually have enough data to show for investors because that's a thing that doesn't exist there. And uh, I worked across many industries. And so coming here and I started looking for a job, and it was like, <laughs> it was impossible because a lot of the times they would look at it and they would only expect um, um, experience in the US. And it's like everything that I'd done before that didn't matter. And okay. if you look at it, it's like a common story with a lot of other immigrants, other uh, skilled immigrants. You mm -hmm. have doctors who come here and they can work. Mm -hmm. And they have to do some, some job that is way below their levels. And th what that does, it, it takes away your self-esteem. It sure. takes away a lot of who you are because what it's telling you is that um, you have to change who you are completely mm -hmm. part of this community. Yep. And um, I was thinking about it and I'd been asking around going to different venues, proposing mm -hmm. um, something like this for us, for uh, uh, other, other people, other creatives to showcase their talents. And nobody was mm -hmm. really interested in any of that. And so it started with um, me um, just saying, we have to create our own platform. We mm -hmm. have to make something work for us. We can't mm -hmm. wait for everybody to do it for us. Mm -hmm. um, we know what we can start and then we go gradually and mm -hmm. we must not have everybody on board at first and so uh, uh, i invited a couple of friends and said let's start this in my basement and invite our friends and then just get their feedback you know try to see how we can uh, get this into something that really works and yeah. luckily for me i found a lot of like found many many uh, african creatives who were just hanging around and they were so excited because some of them had not done music in like 20 years. Some of them mm -hmm. had not done and you, it, it, it digs a hole in your soul. You could mm -hmm. see them really crying out for something like this. Mm -hmm. And so we started that. And uh, the plan was to do, just take people um, through a journey through Africa, throughout Africa, the different uh, regions of Africa, just mm -hmm. informing that one, let's debunk the fact that Africa is not a country. Thank you. Let's, let's, <laughs> it is not a country. Yes. Let's do that and put a nail in the coffin. Yeah, like, let's coffin. make it, it clear. Is, Africa is not a not country. Not a country, yes. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and we don't have lions uh, uh, strolling in our backyards and stuff like that. Or we don't, we don't have tree, tree houses and we, that's not where we sleep and all of those things. And I, I, I've never ridden a giraffe and I've never even seen one, even though we have some up north in Cameroon. And so <laughs> we, we wanted to just debunk those things. But then um, mm -hmm. um, it's easy when you come into a community and you face all of these uh, barriers to just mm -hmm. hang with your own. And by hanging with your own, you don't learn anything. You don't mm -hmm. go anywhere. Your voice isn't heard. And so we wanted to just bring the community together, bring Africans and uh, the rest of the community together so we can learn about each other um, in a safe space. Mm -hmm. And we would use food, we would use music, we would use storytelling, we would use poetry. And so this is, uh, uh, this brings all the creatives together in, in some form or shape. Sure. Yeah, so th that's how the motherland got, got born. And at the end of the day, the creatives get some additional income 
mm-hmm. that they can use while trying to find their way into the into the uh, uh, society. But then they also have a support group of people like them who are mm-hmm. probably going through the same thing. So it makes the job easier. And having been in Germany, I knew just how important <laughs> yeah, that yeah. is. And yeah. so, um, yeah, for me, it's about just empowering, holding each other's hands, because mm-hmm. I've also learned that if you go alone, you don't go far. You need to hold as many hands as possible and you you march through whatever adversity there is. It just makes it easier um, to bear. Okay. <laughs> that, no, that's good. That's that's true. We it, Yeah, it, we're at a place where I think we're finding more... Um, than any other time, right? That like solidarity yeah. is important yes. um, and unity is important. And, and um, having unity does not mean uh, the absence of struggle. It doesn't mean the absence of dissent, right? Yes. Uh, yes. Everyone will not agree, but it, it is a, a conscious choice and decision um, yes. right, to to posture yourself in a place of empathy um, in an agree and in agreement in that moment for a greater yes. cause. And that's beautiful. Oh, we're getting a baby in the camera. It's all right. It's okay. He's here. Oh, oh. Hey, Nina. <laughs> this is Watson. Oh my gosh. Look, we have you, this, got three, like, you have three ones over there. You have to start a little family man. <laughs> Can you imagine? She loves music. She's the one person who's like crazy about. Uh, when when we start rehearsing here, she go gets her drum, she gets her things, and she's like tick tick all over the place singing yes. songs. And yeah. then- you drumming? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, inspirations, collaborations. Um, who are you really being inspired by now, or who have you been? Who who do you uh, know as one of your greatest musical inspirations, if you will? Mm. Yeah, who do you want to collaborate with? Um, yeah, I, I think those um, questions are always fun because it just yeah. gives some insight into you know people that you look up to and, and help shape kind of your yeah. musical flavor, taste, your palate, your identity. Yeah, I love, love, love Jill Scott. <laughs> and why? That's, not, that's not a that's not like a, an abnormal decision or choice, I think. But yeah, yeah why is that? um. She's very vulnerable in her song. Mm-hmm. Um, she she has a lot to say. She doesn't shy away from big topics. Um, and she can sing. She's a poet. She's so talented at so many levels. Mm-hmm. And, um, okay. <laughs> I need to get this, this girl out of here. This is real life. I was on the bus. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, that is that is the life of a real working artist, mom, entrepreneur. Like, oh my god, that's this, what it's about. Point, yeah, at some point in all the experiences we do, we make sure that they are gone. Somehow she always finds she creeps. I don't know how she does it, but then she goes and she's like, "Mommy, I'm like, no." <laughs> Trust me, I know. You know, I know. Oh, 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 I have oh. two boys and they, they do not do not let me rest. But yes, so Jill Scott. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um she she is she is bold mm-hmm. in the songwriting. Um she's not she's not worried about um well I don't know her personally, but you can tell that she's not worried about what anybody thinks about that. And yeah. um, that's something that I really, really admire. Being mm-hmm. especially coming from a culture that um it's called African wife Christian and you have to stand so everything. Mm-hmm. And um I I appreciate people who, who go all out. Mm-hmm. Who go all out, they express their minds and um um you 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 may not agree with them, but they have mm-hmm. something to say and they go ahead and they say it. Mm-hmm. For us it's like, oh what are the repercussions, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you're gonna get disowned or something like that. You know, sent out of a clan. Yeah, but there are those things that we have to worry about. The African communities are still very, very, very conservative, so Mm -hmm. um, you have to be very careful. Even when you speak, you have to make sure it's coded. Mm. You know, and um, in that way, you 
there are serious repercussions back home like your family members could end up disappearing or stuff like that so <laughs> so if you're gonna be the voice of dissent you have to be be smarter about it and code up stuff gotcha. so i love to see uh, artists who can just go out and express themselves i yeah she's she's beautiful she has a beautiful soul i connect with her music on so many levels but she she appears to be so humble too you know yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and i like that i like that a lot um same thing with india ari oh. mm-hmm. yeah so those that. are my two my girls i'm just like oh when i hear them it's like yeah <laughs> <laughs> i keep on telling my husband like um i actually still haven't been to any of their concerts um Yes, yes. Oh, we gotta, yes. we gotta, we gotta change that. Yes, I'm like, this needs to. It, it's, I don't care what's happening. If mm-hmm. they have a concert anywhere around here, and if it's far, we still have to go. So somebody will have to take care of them, so babies. And, yeah, they, the Ari was supposed to play um, Shane Park or the Aretha Franklin Amphitheater this August, but that mm-hmm. concert uh, series got postponed. And yeah. so, it, every artist that's on that bill for the summer concert series there did reschedule for next for yeah. 2020. Oh, that's amazing. So Indy yeah. Ari will be there 2021. Don't yeah. worry. Yeah. And she's I, phenomenal. I, and you, I've seen her four times in Detroit um at the at the at Shane Park Amphitheater. It's outdoor. It's, it's right yeah. over her Canada's in the backdrop. Yes. Yeah. Like from the water. And she has family, um some of her family roots are in Detroit. So it's always really a good time because like a lot of her family comes and it's yeah. really just chill. And she's phenomenal in that environment. Yeah, so, that's amazing. I, I love that. We might have to make that a double date and go to that concert. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You'll be like, oh, so I, I usually tell Issa, like, when we go for those concerts, right? You don't <laughs> want to say about Vegas, right? Just let your wife be. Yeah? I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to be like, ah, one of those like crazy fans here. That's what uh, I'm a concert clown. Like, if this is an artist <laughs> that I love, like, I am the person that is standing the whole time. Obstructing everyone's vision, like you do not see the artist on the stage. I'm singing every <laughs> lyric, like it just, is. <laughs> it just is what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, let's have some more fun. Let's uh, let's play uh, let's play song association. Okay. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I've never done this before. Lord help me. It's yeah. super easy. We'll probably play. <laughs> We'll do five rounds, so five words. Essentially what it is that I'm going to give you a word, and then you're going to have 10 seconds to sing Uh the first song or lyrics that come to your mind. And it has to be real. It could be your own. It could be another artist. It doesn't matter, but any song. And you have 10 seconds to uh, sing a line of a song with that word as a lyric in the song. Okay? Good. Here we go. First word is dance. Okay, dance. Um... Oh, I want to dance with somebody. Ooh, you I want to feel the with somebody. Yeah, I want to dance with somebody. With somebody who loves me. She but went straight for Whitney, y'all. Uh, huh? That's Whitney. That's Whitney, yes. right? Yeah, yeah Whitney is there. That's uh, my son to other dancing. This one is in French, but it's the same thing. Uh-huh. Oh, hey, Oh my don't say oh hey oh oh my swing <laughs> that's called that was a, that, I think that was the one at the concert of February that like just turned the party out. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody was like, wait, hold up. Now what is this? <laughs> right. <laughs> People came to just like sit and listen and you know sip on their, their bourbon or whatever drink they were drinking. And you were like, no, put that down. <laughs> The the next word is stop. Mm. Stop. Please don't stop the music. The music. That's Rihanna. Michael Jackson first. Michael Jackson first. That's a that's a Rihanna cover of a Michael. Oh yeah 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 yeah. That's true. That's true. That's true. They also uh, did a couple from uh, Manu Dibango. He's of late now. He passed uh, of um, COVID nineteen, unfortunately, this year. So you know the um, yeah. all of them. Michael Jackson and Rihanna sampled that from uh, 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 Manu Dibango. Yes. Yeah. Oh, 
I didn't know he passed. Yeah, he did. It has been a year. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Throw, everybody's like, just throw 2020 away. Like, <laughs> let's just... Let's just forget this year of rap. Let's forget it. Let's forget it. This and start a- all over. Yeah. Oh, let's just not let's not even start over. Let's just rush to, to, to 221 or 2021. Oh my gosh. Uh fight is the other word. Okay. So this um my song uh, The Lies. This mm-hmm. the bridge uh, <clears throat> goes, I'll fight you, I'll fight you, the lies you. I'll find you, I'll find you, the lies you. Yeah. Nice. Talk to me about that, unpack that song. What is the song about? The song, it talks about um, the negativity and the lies that we get from everyone around us, mm-hmm. telling us you're not good enough. Um, um, you're not, you're not, so resources are there, but they are for people who are better than you. Mm. Oh, you're not beautiful enough, or you're not smart enough, or you're not, you know, people who just tell you you mm. cannot do or be or exist. And so a lot of the times we take that in, even when we don't know, we think we're fighting it outwardly, but, you know, they stay in there. And so mm. this is a song that says, um, I'll fight you, I'll fight you the lie. And then it mm. says, uh, I wish I could get saved. From the damage I have done to me, the lies I've been hearing, hands believing, letting them flow with me. Yeah. Make new decisions, say a prayer, thanks, and make a wish. It feels so delicious. Most of the time, it's all that really works. So, all that really works with these kind of things is to. Mm-hmm. Uh, Make a new decision, you know, yeah. say a prayer, and then you mm-hmm. thank God for the experience. And you, yeah, yeah, y'all, you got it, people. <laughs> got you a little mini concert. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next word is heart. Heart. Oh, okay. Unbreak my heart. <laughs> Good, yes, Tony. Tony, we, we love Tony Braxton. Oh, I love Tony Braxton. She's one of my favorite singers. Yes, so, yeah. yes. I, I love her. I love her. And, and I'm a 90s girl, like straight out. So that's why, if you ask me, that's where, that's where good music and this. Yes. <laughs> I have to, I always have to convince people, like, real, I mean, music has always been real. There's always been real music. Yeah. But there is something about 90s yes. R&B and soul music that yes. is just like, in my mind, completely transcendent. And I yes. think a lot of times, like, like certainly, like, I, we both love, like, old school music things. Yes. Yes. yes, yes. We certainly love those things. But I feel like 90s is the last decade of music, mm-hmm. in my mind, that would be, like, transcendent, that, like, 30 years from now that like my kids are going to even listen to. Yes. I the, or, it's, or it's the last group of music that in my mind is multi-generational like that, mm-hmm. that like my parents listen to, that I listen to, that my kids yeah. will listen to, or that like even my grandmother listened to some yes. 90s music. But it was like the last group of music that like everybody could come together on, quote unquote, so to speak, or agree that it was like the bar. Yes. I totally agree. Uh, <laughs> A lot of the times with the young people we work with, I make them listen to <laughs> yes. like a lot. Then I was this, I was like, oh my God, don't tell me you don't know this person. Like, are you are you serious right now? <laughs> but yeah, there's just so much to learn from, from that period. There's just so much to learn. It is so funny to like, to now be of the age of like doing that, right? Like, yes. You, I'm sure you remember, we all remember like, Oh, you're with an auntie or uncle or a cousin, yes. or you know, even your parents when you were younger, and they're like, "Oh, let me teach you something. Let me li- listen to this," you know. <laughs> and you're like, and "Now, like, <laughs> but they're like, hey, hey, let me come, come listen to this. Turn that off. Listen to this." We're repeating the cycle. Yeah, time passes by, and we're getting older. I'm just like, yeah, we don't need that reminder, but yeah, it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> Into that. So in your opinion, as a, as a working artist um, and musician, 
what is music in the in the the larger scheme of music around us? What do you feel like is missing from music right now? Oh, I feel like it's hard to find people who are really um, authentic mm. because a lot of the times now it's almost all about branding. Mm. Okay. And and uh, walking in a persona and creating something um, for now it's all about money. Mm-hmm. It's it's always been about money, but you had a lot of musicians who were not for the money, and those are the people you find are real, are open, are vulnerable, are um, able to share real stories, true stories, and really move people. And uh, because it's getting harder and harder to be an independent artist, mm-hmm. it is sort of like disappearing. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, it's just um, something that the general public would like and the niches are getting even smaller and smaller so um i i think we 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 really need to invest in in um independent artists or people who are just trying to be authentic a little more um for example let me take us back to cameroon there are everybody is doing afrobeat now Mm -hmm. because they've seen that um, Afrobeat sells, but then in trying to do Afrobeat, you start mimicking the people who've been successful doing Afrobeat. Mm-hmm. And so after a while, everything sounds the same. You listen sure. to this song, you turn to the next one. It's like, I just listened to this song. You mm-hmm. know, like <laughs> mm-hmm. what, what is different? The only difference is it's two different names. Yeah. They cycle the same. Uh, beats over and over and after a while it's like I really don't I cannot listen to this anymore unless mm-hmm. you have somebody fresh come up and then as that person gets successful everybody starts following that person and doing the same mm-hmm. thing so um, there's really no space for people to be their own artists mm-hmm. and um, that is the problem I really wish we had more of such people especially now yes good so what's next what's, what's next, next? Yes, I am so excited. I have, so I was actually supposed to have put out a single and then COVID-19 happened and we had to like was scrap that, that, everywhere. You were recording songs in closets. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you don't need you no know, big production studio. You can record it right in the bathroom. Oh yes, oh yes. Can you believe I have, I have a studio in my, in my, um, in my, actually in my closet. I didn't know that. Yeah, I have that there. So I've been recording. I'm to come over and, and lay down some vocals or something. Oh yeah, yeah. You you would you would you would spend probably the first hour just laughing out loud. <laughs> 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 it's as as rustic as it gets, but we're able to get like um, a good sound, and mm-hmm. that's all that matters. And during yeah. this time, this was like a period for me um, because I was all over the place with all the things that were happening. I mm-hmm. still am, but to a lesser extent. And so I have been able to really um, get back in touch with my creative side uh, in writing because yeah. most I've just been doing um, um, performing and 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 um, administration and management for the artists that I work with. Mm-hmm. And so this was like an, uh, an amazing opportunity and I'm so excited. I wanted to do this for such a long time. I wasn't yet done with the album. Uh, mm-hmm. We're not yet done, but we've done so many songs. and. Um, the album, I'm just going to say, it's going to be called DNA. And uh, with DNA, I mean um, African DNA. And mm-hmm. it's going to tell the story of um, just how much uh, music from Africa went all over the world, along with people, mm-hmm. along with, um, um, and the people changed, and how it's come right back to us, and it's going right back out again. That? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So yeah, there's gonna be real stories, uh, different. Uh, so we want to showcase as much of African diversity as we can, because a lot of the times when people think Africa, they think it's either um, Afrobeat or or deep, 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 deep uh, f- folklore, or dance hall, or, or yeah. dance hall, or but there's just there's there's so many things in between. Sure, and sure. right now you can't say this 
is African because mm -hmm. we've evolved so much. It's just, it's, it's crazy. I grew up listening to country music mm -hmm. and I don't think anybody can take uh, that away from me just mm -hmm. because I, it's not, it's not from Africa. Sure. We have influences from everywhere. And so yeah. those contribute to who we are musically. But what is important is that we don't forget where we come from, the roots. Mm -hmm. And as we're exploring all of these things, we need to come right back home. So the mm -hmm. album is gonna, we're gonna do like a little trip and come right back there. And I'm so excited about it. Yeah. And <laughs> no, it sounds beautiful. I'm excited. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, when when it drops, we will we will have to follow up and do another feature and certainly okay. hopefully get, at that time get you into the studio maybe on the morning show talking about the music. But wow, that's gonna be awesome. That would be amazing. Good, good. Well, tell the people where they can find you, where they can find your music, how they can remain connected to you, um, and your art and cooking classes, all those things. Yes, yes. So um, you can connect with me on my website www.myramaimo.com and um, there you would have access to our Motherland Cultural Connections page, our house concert page, so if you were interested in attending a concert, you could go straight to the shop and buy a ticket from there. And for our cooking experience, it's called a Motherland Cooking Experience with an mm -hmm. X, so instead of EX for experience, you have an X. And the website is the same thing, www.motherlandcookingexperience.com. And so you can go there and pick whatever you want. We have options for couples, for date nights. We have options for groups. We have options for companies, for team building. And it's just, it's wow. just a fun time to, mm -hmm. to explore a different culture together. You get to learn a lot. You don't even realize you're learning that much because you're having so much fun in the process. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just a way of bringing us all together, be it um, uh, in person or virtually. So mm -hmm. as for now, we've dialed back on the in-person experiences, but we are very active online with all virtual experiences for the house concerts, for the cooking experiences. And it's fun. It's really fun. Awesome. Yeah, well, thank you, we're so grateful that you were willing to sit down with us right now um, and super you. excited about all that you have going on in the future we look forward to um, continue to remain connected and certainly supporting uh, your art definitely so thank you so much thank you so much for having yeah. me thank you brother yeah. <laughs>